Tiri ti ti. La la. Hello everybody, welcome. I'm trying to keep warm in here. And the weather seems to have taken a turn for the colder. So, um, yeah, what am I doing? Uh, I'll just, what have I got to show you? Um, let's see. Well, look, if you've got a wood burning stove like I've got here, you can always put a pail, some metal pail or metal bucket on top of the stove and put some water in it and you'll have your, for yourself some hot water for throwing. Okay? That's always a good, a good idea. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of psychology about throwing. You know, when you come into your studio, if you have, if your studio is freezing cold, if the water is freezing cold, if the clay is freezing cold, you're not going to be so inclined to want to go into your studio. You've got to go through this psychological barrier. Do you know what I mean? Um, certainly for me, I know that if the studio is freezing and the clay is freezing and the water is freezing, it's going to be doubly difficult for me to get out of the studio. So, get your studio warm before you plan to go into your studio. In other words, if you think, oh, well, I'm going to go out to the studio at 10 o'clock, well, go in at 9 o'clock and light the fire so it's warm. It makes a big difference. Um, and if it's a case of putting some water on to heat, then put some water on so you've got something prepared ahead of time for, for doing your throwing. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, yeah, clay. If you leave clay in your, in, your, in your studio and it's very cold at night, now as we're approaching winter, the, co the clay takes on the ambient temperature and gets very, very cold. So what I, what I often do is, if I'm going to you know, do some throwing the next day, well, the night before, I'll take into the house uh, a, couple of, a couple of bags of clay and keep them in the house. So when I, then when I go out to the studio, I take the clay with me and it's not freezing cold. So when I, I can wedge it and it isn't, you know, so cold on my hands. Okay, just a few little tips there. <laughs> Um, as you can see, the, the GP bowls that I've made, that you saw me making and finishing off, they're here now by the, by the fire. You can see I've arranged my, my wear boards on these little shelf brackets here, so I can easily put my work here organize it, put it in this racking. Another thing you need, you must, you must get yourself wear boards. Not all these little pieces of wood, odd, odd pieces of wood. In fact, I've got to go and get some more myself because I'm, I'm in need of some. So, you know, go down to your hardware store, uh, your hardware merchant place, and take a whole big board and get them to cut it up into into, into uh, equal sized pieces. I recommend, you know, something about that, about that sort of length is, uh, is ideal. You don't want it any shorter than that really. Okay, so these are drying here. I had them in the sun yesterday a little bit, but today it's not so sunny. So uh, anyway, the fires are light, they're in here and I have to be a bit careful they're not too close to the fire because this fire is kicking out the heat. Okay, so I'm just going to put the camera over here. Something else I just want to quickly show you. Let's move it over here a bit. Now I've got something here that arrived in the post. I just want to show you. No, it didn't arrive in the post. It arrived via FedEx. Try 
try and get my illuminations in order here. So, in this box, what do we have? Let's have a look and see. We've got that, we've got that. So what is it? Yes, you guessed it. You guessed it, it is. It is. The stools I ordered. So, Adjust the height by putting through through here a a bolt with a winged nut. Comme ça. Okay. Quite handy and. Foldable. I can take take the top bit off here, and then it can all fold flat. Um, I actually have one complaint about them, to be honest. I tell you what, they were cheap and cheerful. If anybody wants to know where I got these from, you know, so often we spend a lot of money, don't we, on our, on our throwing wheel, but we don't really pay much attention to what we're sitting on. We tend to sit on anything from upturned buckets, like you saw me doing the other day, to uh, all kinds of chairs and stools and things like that and um, I, I before before I came here when I was before in Barryville I borrowed some drummer stools from a friend and they were very good but when I ordered these I thought great this is a they're very very if anybody wants to know where I got them from just write to me um, no, second thoughts, don't write to me because I'm getting too much mail at the moment and I can't cope with it. <laughs> That'll only add more to it, won't it? Um, I think the website is ed, edmwi, edmwi.com. And you go there to the, there's a section, they sell everything, you know, on this website. It's very cheap stuff. But it's not bad, it's not bad quality, I don't think. It's too bad, anyway. Um, EDMWI.com, and then down the left hand side is like a um, 
music or musical or something it says, something to do with music, click, click on that. Or, no, you don't even have to do that actually. If you just go to edmwi.com and just put in the search bar, um, I think you put in the search bar, drum, try putting in drum throne seat, drum throne seat. It was a bit particular, the, the search criteria, I put in things like drummer's stool, it didn't come up and uh, uh, actually on the box over there it says drum throw, th drum throne seat, yeah that's it. So, and you'll have to part with seventeen and a half dollars. That's all it costs. Not badly. But one complaint. Um, for those who have a, a large derriere, <laughs> you may find it a little bit narrow across there. In which case, um, you can just put a piece of foam over it, just re-upholster it with a piece of thickish foam, you know, and then and then and then nail it or upholster it into the base here. Just take it all the way around and upholster it into the base there. And that will give you a little bit extra width, maybe a couple of inches, if you get, say, foam that is like two inches thick. So that doesn't cost very much to get that kind of foam. So anyway, um, so look, we're in business with, uh, with our schools, aren't we? So there we are. That's that. Um, what I was going to do next was uh, make some mixing bowls. Uh, they're going to be two pounds uh, for for use in the kitchen with a pouring with a pouring lip. And as you can see over there, I've got some clay that I'm just wedging. I'm just going to finish giving that a few more. Uh, a few more bashes uh, that clay but I, I'll have to stop the clip I think then because we'll run we'll run over time won't we which is slightly varying hardness. It's reconstituted clay and some of it is hard and some of it is soft. So if you try and do what I'm doing now here, kneading, and you've got hard and soft together, sometimes it takes quite a lot of kneading to get it thoroughly, thoroughly mixed up, doesn't it? But if you do the wedging, like what I showed you with the wire there, cutting, banging down, turning it 90 degrees, bang it down again, etc. That helps to break up any hard lumps that there are in the clay and makes it then easier to knead it. In this studio here, the surface that I'm 
I'm uh, uh, wedging and kneading on here is what was already here. I'm making use of it. And I think it's like a sort of formica. Formica, you know, it's like sort of... Um, I'm not quite sure what formica is made out of, but... Um, sort of man-made, plasticky, resinous stuff. Seems to be okay though. I thought it might stick to it, you know, because really surfaces that have no porosity at all, if you knead on them, they can tend, the clay can tend to stick to them. But this, at least for the moment, seems to be okay. So, Ooh, warming up now, you see? Bit of wedging and kneading. Don't need a, don't need a stove or a heater anymore. So that's that, I've got the other one to do. Okay folks, I'm gonna call it a day there uh, on this clip and uh, we'll continue making these kitchen bowls with a pouring lip at two pounds. Okay, Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. Well done.